Well, it's that time of year, guys. It's that time of year that farm families, we celebrate the harvest. And this same time that we celebrate Mr. Brown's birthday, we had an anniversary a few days ago, and I've got a granddaughter that has a birthday this week too. So we try to just kind of combine it. But this time of year is what, uh, it's about the time that people would come together after a big long harvest and they'd celebrate. And they'd celebrate with, with fruit and uh, desserts and just all kinds of food. They'd get together and just celebrate. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> we're going to celebrate the harvest. I don't have, I live so far out in the boonies, I don't have trick-or-treaters. But I do have grandkids. And even my adult children love the old-fashioned molasses popcorn ball. So I thought I'd bring y'all along and uh, we can make some. Because y'all may want to make some too. And uh, it doesn't matter what brand of molasses, if it's sulfured or unsulfured, it's, both of them is going to work either way. I'm going to use this. This is Grandma's, and you can buy this at Walmart. You can buy it pretty much anywhere. It's Grandma's uh, Gold Standard Molasses Unsulfured Original. And this is what I'm going to be using. And this is a, a real neat size to have because it's 12 ounces. The recipe calls for a cup and a half. So there you go. You don't even have to measure it out. But it's really an easy process. I mean, it's going to take you a little while. But it's nothing hard to it. And I've got three quarts of popped popcorn right here. Whether if you make it in the microwave or on top of the stove, it don't matter. I've got a grandson. Sometimes they'll come over on Sundays. And in the Sunday afternoon, sometimes we'll pop up some popcorn. And he'll say, Nanny, he'll say, are you going to make some of that old-fashioned popcorn? <laughs> Which he means on top of the stove. Uh, because, you know... For years and years, all they've you know known is microwave popcorn. So, anyways, we got three quarts of popcorn here, and I like to go through it and sift through it, and make sure there's not any of them little kernels in there, because that'll crack a tooth for sure. And one of the things you want to invest in, especially this time of year, when we're starting to make candy, get your a uh, candy thermometer, and you don't have to go and buy you an expensive one. They have them at the Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, Walmart. Get you one because you're going to need one this holiday. And I've got me a heavy, deep saucepan, excuse me, Dutch oven here, which is what I'm going to use to do this in because I need, I want the thickness. Because when you're doing anything like this, especially making candy, you want, you know, a a good heavy pot so that's going to be my cast iron ceramic coated pot here you want to have tall sides on it you're going to need it once you get it all in here so just get you a thermometer just hang it there on the side just like that and all we're going to do is we're going to put our first Six ingredients. I'm going to read that out to you. Well, I'm just going to dump it in there and I'll tell you as we go. So you're going to have three-fourths cups of water. One and a half cups of molasses. And that's exactly what's in this jar. So we're just going to pour that in there. It smells so good. When I smell molasses, it makes me want some uh, a molasses. <laughs> and I've got a video to old-fashioned molasses cake, gingerbread cake. I don't think I've got a video for gingerbread or molasses cookies yet. But that this time of year, that's just one of my favorites. But I can remember as a young girl, I always loved these old-fashioned popcorn balls. So we got our one and a half cups of molasses. You need one and a half cups of light brown sugar. Let's see, you need a tablespoon. You need a tablespoon of vinegar, and I'm using just white distilled vinegar. 
Now, can you use other vinegars like your uh, apple cider vinegar? I can't tell you that because I've never used that kind. I've always used white vinegar. So one tablespoon of white vinegar. I've got one fourth teaspoons of baking soda and I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar in here. Make sure you get it all in there. So my vanilla and my butter is going to the side right there because we're not putting that in yet. So I'm going to read the ingredients off to you that we've put in our pot so far. We got three fourths cups of water, one and a half cups of molasses, one and a half cups of light brown sugar, one tablespoon of vinegar, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put it on my burner back here on the back and I'm going to put it on low. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on low until I get all this sugar dissolved. And once I get the sugar dissolved and it looks like it's good and you know mixed up good I'll turn it up just a little bit to about a medium low and then we're going to take it to we're going to let it boil and cook and keep it stirred and let it get up to a softball stage and you'll know it here on your candy thermometer softball stage is uh, it's between uh, let me look at because I don't want to tell you wrong Softball stage is between 234 and 240. So I'm going to keep stirring this. And I'm going to bring y'all down where y'all can see it and look at it. And uh, I'm going to get the sugar good and melted in there. And then we'll turn the fire up just a little bit. Okay. I can still hear a little bit of the brown sugar on the bottom of the pot. So I'm just going to stir, and it is, it's dissolving. And you can see what the, the baking soda does to your liquid mixture. And right now, it's just up to 150. So I'm going to turn it up to about a medium low. Y'all, I've got the front door open, so you're hearing the birds out there fussing at the squirrels. I've got my wood cook stove uh, keeping the house from being so damp. I don't have a big fire in it, just enough to cut the chill. <laughs> Anyways, it's enough to kind of make it warm in here, so every once in a while you got to open the door up. But I'm just going to keep stirring this. Right now it's between 150 and 175. You can see what it what it looks like there. We're going to get it to about 234. And that's when we'll put our butter in. So you want to keep it stirred. Here at the softball stage, we're going to put our butter in it and that's going to calm the foam down just a little. I don't like much. So you can see that didn't take very long to get to your softball stage. So you're going to need three-fourths cups of butter. And I'm just going to cut mine into pats to throw in there. So I'm going to put... Make sure that don't get away from me. Okay. Got my pats cut up there. Let's see where we're at. It's fogging up on me. Okay. We're there. We're at, well, we're over 234. So we're going to start putting our butter in. 
And you'll see how it's going to calm that foam down as we put it in. And just keep a stirring. Now, once you get all your butter in there, and you see how that's calmed down, we are going to bring this up to hardball stage. And hardball stage is 250 to 266. So just stand here and just gently keep stirring it. Your butter's going to melt. And you'll get it up there to the hardball stage. Okay, we just got, we are almost to the hard ball stage. Now, when I put the, put the butter in there, it brought the temperature down just a little bit. So that's going to bring it down. You're going to see it go down a little bit, but the, you're okay. Just have patience and stand here and keep it stirred and let it get back up to there to hard ball stage. And it took about eight minutes on medium low heat to get it back up there to the hardball stage. And we are pretty much there. So what we're going to do now I'm going to take my I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm going to take my thermometer out there. And at this point, you're going to put your teaspoon of vanilla and just stir that around good. Now, I turn the heat off, so it's, it's done. Got all that vanilla in there. Now what I'm going to do is put my pop popcorn in there. And I don't like to just throw it all in there at once. Put a little bit of time, stir it up. Then we'll put the rest of it. It just makes it easier to get it stirred up if you don't just throw it all in there. Plus I'd have half of it probably out on the out on the stove and everywhere else if I poured it all in there at once. And I don't like pouring the bowl, just turn the bowl up in case there are some kernels left in the bottom. So just bring them out like this. I don't see any kernels, but you never know. So we are going to stir this up good. And then our next step is just to start making our balls and letting them set up. Now the recipe says that it makes 18 to 24 balls. Um, that's going to depend on how small, how big you make them. And that's just up to you. However, what size you want. But make sure you get this stirred up good. And this is going to be a darker um, popcorn ball because of course it's got molasses in it. A lot of popcorn balls are made with Cairo syrup, and they are good too. But this is your old-fashioned molasses popcorn ball. So I'm going to keep stirring this. I want to make sure that I get every kernel with all that goodness on it. And then we'll come back and uh, start making the balls.
Okay, we're going to start making our molasses popcorn balls here. And I started, but what you want to make very sure of is that you let this cool off. Because if you stick your hand down in there and it's still hot, it's going to scald your little hands. And this is really a fun thing to do with the kids too. So please, please make sure this is cooled down. Even if you think the top layer is cool, as you mix it up and get down in there, that molasses down the bottom, it could be still be scalding hot. So just be really uh, careful of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get me a handful here. I'm not gonna make mine too big because I want enough to go around. And what I do is I take them and I absolutely press them together hard. They don't have a chance not to stay together. And I think that's about the right size for little kids for a molasses popcorn boils. Now there's people that make them really big and you can do that. Uh, if you're gonna make very many like that, you probably need to double this recipe. But uh, these are so good, but uh, this is about the size I like to make them, especially for the kids. But just take your hand and just, and it's a sticky mess and you can spray your hands with vegetable spray. That makes it a lot easier too, where it's not so sticky on your hands. So, I'm going to continue doing this till I get it all done. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how you might wrap them up, make them look pretty. Okay, I'm coming back because I'm going to revise this uh, recipe just a little bit. And I'll tell you why. Because when I went to making my uh, popcorn balls, I remembered that last year... I had made up my mind that I was going to change the three quarts of pop popcorn to four quarts of pop popcorn because um, I think you can put another quarter of pop popcorn in there and you're still going to have plenty of the molasses syrup to cover it all. So uh, you see my written recipe and I changed it from three quarts to four quarts. So I just want to tell you all that because, you know, sometimes... It's been a year since I've made them, so I'm like, I totally forgot that I decided to revise that recipe, but I want to come back and tell y'all, and I want to tell y'all how good these are. <laughs> these are so good. The molasses and that uh, brown sugar, the vanilla, the butter, it's all really good. So if y'all have time, and uh, make it a family affair. Uh It'll make it go quicker and it's just fun to do. But just like I said, make sure that you let your popcorn mixture cool down before you stick your little fingers in there. But anyways, I hope y'all like this video. And I hope y'all try this recipe because I really think y'all are going to love it. Especially if you like molasses and you like homemade popcorn balls. Now you've seen how dark these are. That's because of the molasses. The ones you see in the stores are already made or made out of corn syrup. And a lot of people make them that way homemade. Like I said, they're good. So I got just a little bit of something at the end of this video. So y'all hang around. It was a flea market find. And I'm so glad that I went ahead and got it. Uh, I didn't pay much for it. It was a real good deal. And I like the way it turned out. So it's just a little tidbit at the end of the video. So y'all stay with me. We'll see y'all in a couple days. Um, not sure what I'm going to be doing. But I guarantee it's going to be something fun. Something good, something to eat, something. Anyways, God bless everybody. We love y'all. We'll see you.